Wow, my friends, thank you so much for following along in this most delightful chapter and powerfully crafted chapter on how to be a good father. You know, I remember my father in such a way that even until today, my father's still alive at the time of this reading right now. Thank you, Lord. I remember my father in so many ways. Um, I can recall as a young girl, my father leaving off to go to work and I would wait for him, especially during the summer months when there was no school. I would wait for him and play, and play in our front yard patiently waiting. And as soon as 5.30 would strike in the afternoon, in the evening, oh, I would see his truck coming down the road and I would just take off running from wherever I was and I would approach him. I would run until I saw his vehicle come to a complete stop and I would run to him. He would run to me. I kid you not. He would give me the biggest hug and he would place his face on the side of my face and I could feel his his beard, his stubble from having not shaved or maybe from the beard growing out throughout the day. I don't know, but I would feel on the side of his face, his, his face would come against the side of my face, kind of like cheek to cheek. And oh, how I loved him and I loved those moments, those moments that I can still remember even now. I could remember the smell of him, the scent of him. In some aspects, I could still remember the smell of oil on his clothes because he worked in the oil field for, for many, many years. Um, and I can still remember the scent of his clothing. And sometimes, from time to time, when that certain smell would, you know how it happens when you could... Uh, a scent could bring back memories just rushing into your mind. I get that sometimes when I pass near an oil, um, an oil field company or what have you, there's a scent of oil that that's in the air and I could smell it and it will bring these memories rushing and flooding my mind. Um, but I recall those days and, and I'm telling you, I could paint out in my mind. I can see the uniform he has on. I could see him, very strong and I could see him reaching into his pocket to get, you wouldn't believe, a moon pie or a yellow chalk. It would either be a moon pie or a yellow chalk and the chalk he would use, um, I call it a chalk, but it, it was more like a yellow type of crayon, but it felt like um, it, it was a very big crayon. It's something they use to mark the, the pipes with for offshore. Either that moon pie or that chalk was for me. And oh, how I love the simplicity of it. I remember the day like it was just yesterday. How I love my dad. And even now as a grown woman with um, so much memories, I still, still have this relationship with him. And I compare all of the friends that I've had in my life. I've compared their tendencies to that of my father and oh how he taught us God's word because though we were raised Catholic my father is a born-again Christian and he maintains um, his choice to continue to go and visit the church where um, he's been all his life he is a born-again Christian fully aware of who God is and who Jesus Christ is fully aware of his salvation and has talked to me, to my brothers, to my sisters about the goodness of God. And that's what I remember even now till this day. But I do have, like I said, those beautiful memories of my childhood, um, whether it be us just driving around together, going to, um, at the time we would leave our home in the countryside to go into town and we would collect things like groceries or maybe it might be a, a new movie that we wanted to look at on our VHS uh, recorder or um, even more simple things like just visiting with family. I mean, I remember my dad being a very strategic part in my upbringing and allowing me the opportunity to call him my daddy because I knew him in my life. And oh, how I am so blessed because of that experience. How I am so grateful for that experience. 
Now, albeit my parents did not stay together throughout my entire life, they did separate and divorce later on, but I was so much older when that did happen. And I'm grateful to God because even though through their separation, through their divorce, my father maintained our relationship as best as he understood for what he was going through. And I can say that, um, I can say that as a young lady, I can understand now as a young lady what he may have been experiencing. You know, the loss of his family, um, his family just, you know, losing. Can you imagine with me for a moment what it would feel like to lose your children, your wife, and them moving on, you know, to separation, divorce? I don't fully understand or want to know the reason or the repercussions or what happened to create that situation. But as a kid and growing up, um, I do have some beautiful memories of my dad. And like I said, even now as a young lady, um, I'm able to enjoy that relationship even all the more. I kid you not, my dad and I talk every day every day he visits with me i visit with him and when we don't see one another face to face i call him every day at least two or three times throughout the day that is what relationship is and oh how i love him i love him so much and it hurts me sometimes when i have to leave for extended periods of time to leave him i don't like the feeling that i get i really don't and one day i'm speaking this I'm speaking in faith that I will have my dad live with me because I desire to take care of my parents. I desire to take care of my parents. Now, albeit I do have other siblings. As a matter of fact, I have three brothers, three grown brothers, and two grown sisters. I come from a family of six, so I am the third born in the range of things as far as um, my birth area within my family. But nevertheless, me personally, Sonia personally, I desire to have my father live with me when he's unable to take care of himself in those latter years of his life. But he's such a strong guy. I kid you not. My dad goes everywhere. He drives himself. He's 73 now and he drives everywhere he wants to go. He does everything on his own. He is quite healthy. He does everything that you and I are doing and can do, plus some. He's retired from um, the oil field company that he worked at. I was, I was two years old when he started to work at that company, and he spent 37 years at this one particular company. So we have a relationship with not only the company, but they've come to take my dad in as someone who's um, so very special. And always when we're in the area, when we will stop there, I still meet up with some of the managers that I've come to know and love and appreciate them for um, helping him get through a really tough time, the separation and the divorce. So, But I wanted to share a little bit about myself and my family and my father especially, and the example that he provided for me and um, I hope your, your memories are as fond as mine are and some. And for those of us who don't particularly have such memories, God is always your father and he loves you like no earthly father will ever be able to. God said he is a father to the fatherless. So with that, you hold your head up high and you speak of and you relate to the father that you will be when God blesses you with your children. And if you don't have the example, you, you create the example, you become the example for your children to start this legacy for their kids. So my friend, I love you with the love of Christ. I speak to you as I speak to myself. Let us become agents of change, men and women alike, to change these wrongs that we see right next door, right in our communities that do not line up with what it means to be a good father. My prayer and blessing over you and your family. I've received so many 
um, so many good words. I've received so many compliments for what we're doing with reading the works of Dr. Miles Monroe and how these words are for our generation and how we can become so impactful in such a small amount of time if we allow God and his Holy Spirit to use us, to use our bodies to produce the will of God on earth, to be advocates, agents for this type of change. My friend, have a wonderful day. I pray God's blessings chase you down and that they be so great that you will not have room enough in your own life to contain it, that it spill over to your sons and daughters and your grandsons and granddaughters. Have a wonderful day once again. Thanks for tuning in today to the Dare to Share channel. May God bless you and keep you always. Bye.